This week we're going to talk about takedowns, but I am going to have us do takedowns from knees. And this is a topic that is probably not even controversial. Most people think working on takedowns from knees is stupid, um, and I don't blame them. You don't use it in a fight, MMA, a jiu-jitsu tournament, right? But there are points in my matches where I absolutely use the uh, concepts that I learned from here, and, and they are both standing and, you know, if I was in turtle and he sits up, there's a lot of times when um, I use these same concepts. So, and I just think there couldn't be a better, safer place to start to learn these concepts on controlling the body using the shoulder girdle, et cetera. So, um, so we do them, and I just wanna have you learn a few concepts with me this week, because this is also a position we can play from a little bit, and that frequently we do in jujitsu class. So, Rather than get the question all the time, and because there's concepts that we can use everywhere, let's take a look at a couple things from here. I'm gonna have you guys start tied up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let go of both my grips, and I'm, this hand's gonna go right from his collar to his shoulder. It was on his collar, I'm gonna put it on his shoulder. The hand that's over here on the elbow is gonna drop to his knee, and I'm going to push his shoulder behind his other shoulder. So I want, I want his shoulder girdle to do this. And I'm gonna draw a big circle where this knee grip is gonna push across. So I'm gonna do this here. And I'm gonna go to side now. My hand near his shoulder is gonna go to his shoulder. My hand near his knee is gonna go to his near knee. Just right here and here. Boop. Now, it's not a shearing. I can't push sideways and knock over a big guy. It has to be a circle. So I do want this shoulder to go behind the other one. So it is a pushing and that's the beginning of a circle. This knee's gonna get pushed across. So once again, we're tied up and I'm gonna go here and here in a circle. The only piece I haven't emphasized that I'm doing but I haven't said is that I'm keeping my center of gravity closing the distance on him. I end up chest to chest because I was already moving in that direction. If I expected to just turn somebody at arm's length, it's probably going to be a difficult task. Whereas if I'm moving forward, it really does help me turn his body from the corners. And that's how I'm going to describe this concept. The concept of using the corners of the body to, to start a rotation that I can follow up on and get a top position. Okay? This is how a lot of uh, throws, even judo throws, work standing. Is, getting a per is attacking a lower point and a higher point and rotating the person around them. And we're gonna do it here from knees today. The second concept that we're gonna talk about is using the arms to control the shoulder girdle because the shoulder girdle, if I twist the shoulder girdle at the right angle, it actually controls the whole body. If, if he ties up with me and his elbows are like a little too far apart, this kind of thing, yeah. And you're gonna be more and more sensitive to where they don't even have to be, there doesn't even have to be a major mistake. But if his hands aren't basically in right in front of his torso, I can take advantage of this. And what I'm gonna do is, this hand is already basically below his elbow, okay? Because I'm holding the material down here. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna turn this palm up on his elbow. This one's gonna go over the top of this elbow and I'm gonna rotate his arms. And again, I would like this shoulder to go behind the other one. That does make this a more powerful move. If I just go here, it's not as good as if I do this. And then I'm going to literally draw a circle. And by controlling the shoulder girdle, I get to control the whole body. So when we get too twisted up in place, like and our elbow gets away from our body, that is actually a fine way to knock a person over. So we, set our, we start out, we went here. And if his elbows are apart in any way, or not protected, I can go from the one I'm holding underneath. The other one has been holding the collar, and I'm gonna go on top. And I literally have palm up, palm down. These are my grips. I'm not grabbing it and jerking his arms. I just, I'm just here and here. And this one, if anything, just a little bit of a push, like sort of into the socket toward him, but then a rotation. And that puts me right on top, just as effortlessly, as the corners concept is. One last time, when we're here, if he's not very careful with his elbows, yeah, and they come out, I'm just gonna go here, palm up, palm down. Rotate the arms, and I take away his base. So the shoulder girdle turns the spine, turns the whole body.
So now you have a couple concepts that you can work with. Corners, elbows. Just a couple concepts you can work with, but neither is really a technique on its own. Although, you could just use a concept. In fact, most I would say most of my guard passing, I think most guys who have a black belt at this point would say to you, I don't think in terms of technique anymore, I think in terms of concepts. So maybe the concepts are the thing that you take away from this class and use the most. That's definitely possible. But let me give you a technique uh, for taking somebody down. I call this just the step across takedown. It's basically an osoto gari on the knees. What I'm going to do is before I step, I'm going to aim. So aim before you fire. I do that, I'm turning a little bit sideways to him, not by stepping toward him, but by stepping away from him. I actually want a little distance with this too. So I, all I did was rotate a little, and I'm aiming for one knee, I'm aiming right outside one knee, and that's where I'm gonna step. I'm gonna put my heel right there, and I'm trying to bring my shoulder, my shoulder, actually, let go for one sec, my shoulder never stays behind. Because if I step here and I leave my shoulder behind, then if he drags me this way a little bit, I'm gonna fall over. And I don't want that. So I have to have a forward drive. So aim, fire, my step is here. And always my shoulder and my knee are in the same sort of forward plane. Here. And I just do a little bit of a lunge and he'll fall here. And I, my ideal is that you guys end up with knee on the belly. Sometimes I show it and the first few reps people do this and I, you know it's okay if I see it. Aim, fire, I do this. And my knee doesn't land on mat, it lands on the ground. So the way to have him rotate around my shin and land right underneath my knee for knee on belly is to do a lunge, but to know when to actually pull back. So aim, fire. I'm gonna do a lunge, but I'm gonna pull back now because he's falling. So me going forward and then back wraps him around my shin. We tie up just like we did before, collar, elbow. I aim and then I fire. So first aim, then I step across. You notice that my right foot's going all the way to my left side, stepping across this way. I don't step without my shoulder. I do step with my shoulder, do a lunge, and then pull back at the last moment when he's past the point of no return and is falling. That's when I sort of change direction. That's what wraps him around my shin. And we end up here, which of course is close to an arm bar and mount and all sorts of good stuff for me in the end belly. So let's try this. This is just a step across takedown. Let's try it. Three, two, one. Two little details for troubleshooting on this, on this takedown. One is how to remove your arms from the equation, right? So I aim, I step in. There's definitely two ways to finish this. One is using my arms, but that's not the one I want you to do. Okay. Because I have to pretend I'm facing somebody much bigger uh, all the time. And that that's that I'm not maybe going to be able to muscle them. So the, the way I want you to try and finish is this. I'm going to step and, and crowd his space so much that he's going to fall just because I'm in there. I didn't use my arms. It looked like I clotheslined him maybe a little bit. But I just I let go just to show you. It isn't this at all. It's just how much I crowd him. And the other troubleshooting point is about how to crowd him without weakening my own body. So... If I aim, if I arch my lower back like this, and I come in with an arched back with like my butt sticking out, it's less effective than if I come in with a hunched back like this. But when I step in like this, I'm weak. And when I step in like this, I'm strong. Okay. So try to hunch your back when you step in and try to just crowd them as much as you can, eliminating the need to use your arms like at all. The last takedown that we did was a forward moving takedown. I moved forward so much that I crowded him and then he, he fell, you know? That's, that's me, this is me moving forward, okay? I will face opponents where either, I don't really wanna move forward because I can sense that they have a lot of base or, you know, this happens a lot. They're way bigger than me and um, I just don't wanna enter necessarily that fight or they are moving forward on me constantly. They're pushing me around. I'm, I'm smaller than, like I said, a lot of my opponents. And, and if they're always pushing me, I need to have a backward moving sort of option too. Because somebody might move forward and I, who I can't stop. So what is my takedown if, if I'm moving backwards? And we get into a category of takedowns um, 
called sacrifice throws, right? Where it's almost like almost like I sacrifice position, I pull them on top of me, but then at the last second, whoop, I change I change the uh, you know the the winner of our situation. So for this one, let's start tied up again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in and I'm going to sort of bully him so that he bullies me back. So I'm going to step up this time, not over here, but I'm going to step up right between his knees and I'm going to kind of push him. And the reaction you uniformly you're going to get is they push back. I push, he pushes. Most people like they're just trying to maintain their base or they're like, oh, you're not pushing me, I'm pushing you, you know? So you get a little pride battle going. Okay. Once he's pushing me, I'm going to be able to make this switch. So I'm going to do it. Um, you can stay right where you are, but I'm just going to, you can just hang out. When I step up and I have pressure and he starts to come back in, what I'm going to do is rotate on this knee. Around and sit and put my uh, foot against his knee. So I stepped up and I pushed and then he pushed. And when he pushes me backwards, I'm rotating. This is a hard thing to describe, but it's almost like I want to put my shoulder here when I come down. See how I got my shoulder kind of to my knee? I, what I don't want to do is create a lot of space. I'm not doing this, because now I'm just going to get squished. Okay, so let's do it with our partner. I'll show you the whole move and I'll show you the last details uh, separately. I step up, I get a little pushy, so he pushes and I'm going to rotate on this and I'm going to pull and it puts me on top. So now the detail I didn't talk about that you didn't get to see before I did it just now, one foot was stopping his knee and he was pushing forward and that stopping his knee means he leaves his base behind. And anytime somebody leaves their base behind, anytime someone moves forward and their butt comes off their haunches, off their legs here, this is solid base, this is not very solid base, I have possibly an option to, to rotate them in the tunnel like a bullet. Um, so what I did was I used the first foot that I put down as a hook inside his thigh, and then I lifted him over with that. Now, I don't have to be strong enough to lift like the biggest guy in the room with my hook to do this move because he's falling anyway. So one more time, I'm gonna tie up with Matt, step up between his legs. This foot, now we know, is a future hook, but I don't hook it now, I just step up. I push, he pushes, so I fall, and I, now I can pull him. I've stopped where he, I'm stopped him, so his butt's gonna come off his heels. And as he comes forward, I can lift this hook. And I can actually still have it right to the end if I want, and then put my foot underneath for mount. So here's the move. Maybe he's a big guy, and he's, we're in a pushing battle. We keep finding myself in a pushing battle. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna push you. And then he says, no, I'm gonna push you. I stop his knee, I lift this hook. And I took advantage of his forward momentum, spinning him like a bullet in the chamber when his butt comes off of his heels. And I end up on top. It's a beautiful, beautiful takedown, one of my favorites. If, if when I step up, I do this and I let my knee collapse to the side of my knee that's down, and then I, and then I come across and I pull him forward, he's just gonna smash my legs. So I actually want him to fall between my knees. So when I pull him forward, I want my knee open. That's how I'm gonna do this. So make sure that when you start, and you put this knee up, you don't do this. Make sure it's outside of his body on this side. You don't have to step very deep, but whatever you do, when you pull him forward, your knee can't be like this, because you're just gonna get two knees smashed to one side. Keep your knees on opposite sides if you can. This is how I'm gonna get a nice take down there. This takedown is based off of a standing takedown. Um, Japanese name is Sumigaishi. This time, I'm gonna grab his cross sleeve. The other grip is gonna be on around his back on his far wing. And I'm actually gonna put one shin across his lap. So it looks like this. I'm gonna pull this across his body, step in. And you see how I have my shin across his belly here? Boom, like this. And I've got his wing here. And now I'm just gonna pull back. This is another type of sacrifice throw because for a moment he's on top of me. If 
but I'm able to roll him off of that shin and he ends up next to me and I can come up on top. If I get a cross sleeve grip and I can step in on my guy. Now I've turned totally sideways to him. My shin is 90 degrees across his, his, his uh, femur here. I'm holding onto his lat. So he has no base over here because his hand, which would have caught him, is on this side. So when I, when I lay down to my back, I just sit on the other side of my shin. I just sit here. And he rolls off. I don't have to send him to the moon. He could just roll off. And I wait for his back to hit the ground. And then I push his arm across. And I come on top. A very nice habit is to hand this to the other hand. Because this is a great control on a person. Like this. Pull it across. Sit on my guy. He lands, I push this across, and I can feed it to my other hand right here, and I'm in side mount with a nice gift wrap grip, etc. I'm just gonna sit and open this shin. I just open this shin, this is where he falls. I feed the arm, I get my grip, and I'm on top here. If you remember, I had you guys aim and fire. And I told you, keep your shoulder with your knee, keep your shoulder with your knee. I said that so that you didn't put your foot here and then Matt throws me to the side where I have no base. So if he throws me to that side, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go down. So when you want to take the person down and get a top position, which is my recommendation, do the move correctly. But you should experiment with this because this is a great opportunity to, you know, feign a bad takedown, but achieve a submission. So when he throws me, I'm gonna bring my shin across and my leg over his head, and now I'm in an armbar. Sometimes they fall over, but I'm here in an armbar now. Because of the move I'm gonna do, this grip on the elbow becomes really important. So don't hold below the elbow. I wanna hold right at the elbow or right above the elbow. This arm, Pulling this arm is what's going to keep his arm in my trap, in my armbar trap. Okay, so aim. I'm going to step. It's kind of bad. I have bad base, but when he throws me, I bring this across his belly and pull his arm now and bring this over his head. The resulting position is one I can finish this armbar right here, especially with my arm under it because it's, it's a fulcrum actually. Or sometimes they fall over and I can finish it here. So. Aim, same as before. But this time when I fire, when I step, I leave my shoulder behind. Puts me in this armbar right here. It's okay to have your foot here. Don't feel like you need to take this out. Don't feel like you need to. It's okay to be here. You just really need your knees to pinch together. 